Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to GFD Traders Tea Time with me, Darius Olachowskis. Today's the 3rd of June 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Wednesday's uh, recorded afternoon session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff, guys. Um, but, yep, before we do that, as always, um, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just a quick mentioning of our JRD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our JRD Bank website and specifically our JRD research page which we also update on a daily basis so yeah, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. Um, now then, quick update on what's happening here globally in terms of the coronavirus. Now the figure continues to rise, unfortunately, and it's now above the 6,400,000. 6, so uh, yeah, so let's see how it's going to be by the end of the day. And let's see uh, where the figure will, uh, or, or should I say, what will the today's daily uh, increase will be. Um, now, jumping into a few charts, now we can see that the indices continue to rise, and this is what I talked about this morning. So the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX. So this is what I, I was mentioning uh, this morning, basically that our main target will be near the uh, 12,273 territory, which the index managed to comfortably, comfortably overcome. And uh, yep, it, it overcame the, this highest point of March, and now, yes, it's currently balancing near the 12,000 300 zone, maybe just slightly below that. However, still very good performance from the German index. But now uh, the big question here is, can this uh, index stay and can it close the daily candle above it? If it can, then well, we will start maybe looking at some higher levels. However, don't get me wrong, maybe a bit of a correction here to the downside could be possible soon. So yep, we'll be, let's be very careful. In a way, the, um, the index might get pushed by the uh, US markets, uh, which are now also showing good performance on the cash uh, the cash uh, in indices on the cash equities and um and uh, now, basically, like I said, for now, look, looking at this technical picture on the German DAX, yes, it is pushing above the 12,300 zone. So, um, in a way, yes, it managed to overcome the um, the uh, the highest point of March. And the question is, can it over? Can it stay above this area? If it can, then well, uh, higher levels could be met. However, like I said, don't get me wrong, we could see a bit of a correction at some point. And because our next targets, uh, which I've mentioned uh, this morning, were the uh, 12,880 seven zone and the 12,973-74 zone. Um, so again, these are possible, but um, yep, be very careful, like I said. Be, uh, in a way, we could see a bit of a correction first before another leg of buying. Um, now then, jumping into the U.S. Uh, market and uh, yep, the, uh, this index here that I talked about yesterday, the Nasdaq 100. Uh, yes, yesterday the index pushed further north. Uh, slowly, slowly it continues to grind higher within this uh, rising veg pattern. Um, and to be honest, what we're aiming here for right now is the all-time high, which is around the 9,737 zone. So let's see if the index manages to reach that area. It currently the the index currently is back Balancing. The cash index is currently balancing near the 9,677 mark. So basically, we will get a small opening gap here to the upside. However, like I said, still be very careful because we are very close near to this uh, all-time high. So let's see if the index manages to uh, test that or even let's see if it manages to overcome this area. For now, we are aiming for this level. In terms of the downside, we need to see a violation of the lower side of the rising wedge first before considering, uh, let's say, larger extensions to the downside. Um, 
Brent Oil. So uh, this is what I've mentioned yesterday and uh, when I was looking at Brent Oil basically what I was saying that in a way uh, keep your eyes on this level here the 39.60 which is which marked the high of the 11th of March because in a way if it prov continues to provide resistance uh, then yep a bit of a setback here could be possible and as you can see this morning we did have a nice push higher um, we did overcome this barrier however as you can see now the uh, the commodity is drifting back down and uh, let's see if it closes below this level if it does uh, and also if it closes below the 100 day EMA then well uh, a bit of a decline here could be possible so keep your eyes on this one a uh, very interesting developments here guys but uh, yeah for now for now we will remain very careful of course uh, the fact that it managed to break this downside line here taken from the high of the 8th of January that's of course overall that's a positive sign however uh, from the very short-term perspective we're keeping an eye on the uh, on this barrier on the 39.60 because for now as you can see it's it's providing decent resistance so let's see if it can continue doing that by the end of the day and it can it force the this daily candles is to close uh, below it or even below this 100 EMA that I've mentioned previously. If so like I said we could see a bit of a, a correction lower. Um, now then Litecoin I haven't looked at this one for quite a while, but it's a bit of a roller coaster ride here uh, for the past couple of days. Um, so yesterday it also popped higher. However, it failed to reach the April high near the uh, one. Uh, sorry, near the. Uh, 50.74 zone and as you can see uh, today the uh, the the crypto is trying to make its way back up overall it's still above this sh uh, kind of short-term tentative upside support line taken from the low of the 13th of March um, yesterday the uh, the sell-off here happened yep and it drifted lower however it failed to reach this upside line which in a way will be uh, still seen as a good area of support if that upside line breaks and we see uh, a further decline below somewhere the 40 of, of below the 41.77 territory then yes this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, yep larger extensions to the downside could be possible but again for now uh, as long as it stays above the upside line there is still potential for the bulls to step in uh, in what we are not excluding here another possible slide to towards this upside line in the short run of course because <clears throat> excuse me as you can see the price is currently getting a hold up near the 100 day EMA shown as the green line here and uh, yep let's see how this daily candle is and where this daily candle is going to end in relation to this EMA um, but if it stays below it then well like I said we could consider uh, a decline here towards this upside support line which if provides support then yes that's wonderful it could be a good plateau for uh, for the bulls to step in and drive this one higher again uh, if you're more on the cautious side you could just wait for a push above the 50.74 zone here and and then aim for higher levels because um, a break above this would confirm a forthcoming low, uh, higher high and of course <clears throat> this would could this could also place the price above the 200 day EMA which probably some bulls could see as a good positive indication and uh, then yep higher levels could be met but for now uh, we are stuck here so first of all probably today let's probably stay a little bit on the neutral side and wait to see and wait and see where this daily candle is going to end in relation to this 100 day EMA. Um, jumping into AUD and ZD, so um, something to keep in mind, something to consider, especially going into uh, going tonight, uh, because tonight, or should I say, during the Asian morning on Thursday, uh, we will have the uh, Australian retail sales figures. So currently, the ex expectation is for uh, the number to have declined sharply. So if the previous was sitting at around 8.5 percent, then the uh, the forecast forecast is currently sell uh, f f the forecast is currently sitting at around minus 17.9 percent so that's month on month for April um, so yep uh, again you can see that the Australian dollar right now is kind of losing ground um, and in especially here you can see that in relation to the uh, New Zealand dollar so the AUD and ZD pair after it hit uh, yesterday after it, it hit 
this 1.0865 level that I mentioned previously. That's the uh, the highest point of November 2019. Um, it now is drifting lower. So the pair yesterday, for example, it formed a new uh, a new higher high, uh, the new highest point here uh, in uh, for this year. And uh, yep, it, first of all, of course, it overs over overshot the 1.0865 level, but it failed to stay above it. And the most important, actually, it failed to stay above this upside support line. Um, now, although it's a bit of a tentative one, however, as you can see, it failed to climb back above it. And uh, yep, now today we're seeing uh, this one, uh, this pair drifting lower, and it's currently near testing this area near the 1.0757 uh, zone, which previously acted as a good area of support now uh, let's see if it does the same trick again it also acted as a good area of resistance before here in April um, but uh, yeah let's see what it how it plays out here today but for now it's it's not looking good here for this pair and in a way if, if the daily candle stays below this 1.0757 then yep further declines are possible so keep your eyes on this one uh, for those who are more on the cautious side you could just wait for a drop below the uh, the low of 28th of May here near the 1.0668 zone and then aim for lower levels because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low. However, as I said, uh, for now we're keeping a close eye on this 1.0757 because if we get a nice daily close below it, then this increases the chances of a possible further decline. However, the reason why I was saying that uh, this 1.0668 level could be a better one to watch because, as you can see, if we do stay stay below the 1.0760, uh, sorry, 1.0 0.0757 then yes it could drift lower however it could prov the 21 day EMA could provide a bit of support as it did here back on, at the end of May so that's why uh, we'll if we see a drop below this area here yes we will aim for lower levels however to get even more comfortable with further declines a drop below the 1.0668 level would be needed in terms of the upside we'll take a bit of a conservative approach and wait for a push a strong move above the 1.0865 zone and ideally of course a daily close above this could do the trick for more buyers <clears throat> Now the effect of the uh, weakening Australian dollar we can see here on GBP Aussie because GBP is not the uh, let's say the strongest uh, of the pair of the currencies right now. Although today we did get uh, slightly better than the forecast, um, the services and composite PMI figures uh, from UK for the month of uh, for the month of May, um, and uh, yep that kind of gave a little boost here for the British pound, um, and in this particular particular pair you can see that Mm, the weakness of the Australian dollar is kind of helping this pair to tr uh, to climb back up although it did reach a low here today near the 1.8058 um, so it's uh, yep it's trying to make its way higher however don't forget that we're still below this downside line taken from the high of the 2nd of April and in a way as long as it remains intact we will continue monitoring the downside so we need to see a good violation of this downside line first and then we could aim for slightly higher levels um, in addition to that we would prefer to maybe to wait for a push above the 1.8526 zone uh, marked by the low of the 20th of May and uh, because as you can see it acted as a very good area of support previously maybe this time it could be seen as a strong resistance level so that's why a nice good break above this could do the trick for more buyers but again for now uh, we are very careful uh, looking at our oscillators as well as you can see uh, both of them are at their lows um, however uh, that doesn't mean that the mm, the pair is kind of done with these lows it could stay here for quite a while so uh, that's why uh, don't kind of rush into this yet because as you can see here for example it, back in the 20th of May we were also here way way at these lows uh, way below the mm, the 30 mark here on the RSI um, but um, as you can see then it yes it recovered somewhat but still got held by this downside line and uh, well we saw another sell-off so that's why Yes, we uh, we are seeing a nice rebound today. Um, we could see maybe this one pushing back up towards this downside line. However, we'll remain very careful because, um, as I said, for us to consider the upside, we would need to see a nice good pop above this downside line and a push above the 1.8526 zone. So keep your eyes on this one.
uh, US dollar against the Canadian dollar and uh, this is something that I've mentioned uh, recently as well that um, if this area here the 1.3465 provides decent support we could see a bit of a rebound here and according uh, according to this upside line here this 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 arrow that I've drawn here uh, then yes there is a possibility to see something like this you can see that today we had a bit of recovery uh, but the 200 day EMA kind of provided decent resistance and the uh, the, the pair kind of stayed up here in this little territory uh, above the uh, above this 1.3465 zone but below the 200 day EMA um, in a way um, if it continues to provide this level here continues to provide decent support then still we could consider uh, the pair to move higher a little bit here, but not much maybe up until here somewhere uh, near this 1.3734 zone roughly around here or even actually if we can grab this one just here put it there we go so you can see that the 1.3708 also could present itself with a nice opportunity to, to kind of to hold the rate from moving higher because as you can see it acted as a good area of support here back on the 12th of March and also recently on the 28th of May um, so if we, in a way if this pair decides to push higher this is where a hold up might made it might occur and if it struggles to overcome this barrier another round of selling could be possible um, in terms of the upside we will for now we will refrain from any um, upside scenarios because still the ideal scenario for us is a break of this downside line and a push above the 1.48 uh, zone and then kind of a, a consideration of higher levels could be done but until then uh, we cannot really it's a little bit a little bit tricky here so um, if we do see a strong move higher here maybe we'll reevaluate re evaluate everything here and maybe I'll consider maybe a larger extension a larger correction here to the upside towards this downside line but again for now uh, we're gonna be very careful still overall the trend is to the downside um, quickly a quick update on a few of these um, exotic pairs I would say because I've looked at these uh, last week a little bit and a lot the week before that so uh, what I was saying here guys to keep a close eye on some of these interesting levels so basically um, previously when we were still hanging around here I was telling you that guys that if one of these levels like the 18.16 level breaks then yep further declines are possible uh, what we're gonna aim here for to is we're initially will aim for the 100 day EMA and as, as you can see we had a perfect hit of that area um, today we're seeing a violation of this two, of this 100 day EMA um, but the question is will the this candle will this daily candle actually stay below this 100 day EMA if it if it doesn't then maybe a bit of a correction here could be possible a, a correction back to the upside uh, where we could then maybe aim for levels like the 17.6650 zone roughly around here marked by the high of the 29th of May um, but again that's that depends on today's candle if, if, if it stays above this uh, 100 day EMA then like I said we will consider such a scenario um, but for now everything's kind of leaning more towards the downside and if it stays below this 100 day EMA then well further declines are possible and to be honest what we're going to do then is we're going to aim for this 16, 16.75 uh, mark roughly around here marked by the high of the 18th of March but uh, if that fails to provide support then uh, the next uh, area to consider could be around this 100 day EMA but we'll get to that um, if when we get closer to this level here the 16.75 zone um, but again again like I said for today for right now guys uh, keep your eyes on the daily candle cl uh, close um, US dollar against the Russian ruble similar story here so I talked about this idea where uh, if the uh, this because previously I talked about this descending triangle which as you can see worked out perfectly according to all the TA rules um, and it broke to the downside it, it violated the lower side of this uh, this uh, this pattern uh, drifted lower and my uh, the level that I was aiming for was around the 100 day EMA which uh, as you can see yes kind of temporarily provided a bit of support um, but then uh, next time when I was uh, kind of the other time when I was re uh, covering this uh, this pair what I was saying that if we get a drop below the 70.60 territory then yes uh, the next target for us is around the 200 day EMA which we've managed to perfectly hit so uh, that's wonderful good uh, good movement here from uh, from this pair everything is kind of working uh, nicely according to the rules 
Um, but if we draw a Fibonacci now, uh, Fibonacci extension, uh, or sorry, Fibonacci retracement, um, and we can connect these uh, levels, you can see that we've surpassed the 61.8% retracement on the Fibonacci. And uh, in a way, if this continues to slide below the 200-day EMA, the next target could be around the 78.6%, uh, which is roughly around the 65.58 zone. So, uh, yep, guys, keep your eyes on that one. Could be quite an interesting one to uh, monitor, but uh, like I said, for now, we are leaning a little bit more to the downside, especially if the, uh, if the daily candle stays below the 200-day EMA. A quick update on Euro CHF. So this one continues to rise perfectly. So this is what I talked about recently this week. And uh, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this downside line, which if we get a nice daily close above it, then yep, it could increase the chances of a possible further move higher towards the 1.0812 zone initially. And then we'll aim for the 1.0863. So for now, everything is kind of uh, is working out nicely according to the bulls here. And uh, yes, yesterday we had a nice strong close above this area, above this downside line uh, taken from the highest point of uh, April 2019. And now, yes, we are uh, we were seeing the, a continuation move and further north. So as I said, for now we're targeting the 1.0812 and the 1.0863 territories. Uh, we'll see how it performs around these levels and uh, yep, we'll take it from there. But again, like I said, for now, we are uh, a little bit more bullish than bearish. However, don't get me wrong, maybe a small correction could be possible here, especially if it hits this 1.0812 territory and if, and if it struggles to overcome it straight away, then maybe a small correction here, maybe a bit of sideways movement for a couple of days and then maybe a push higher, like a, a, new, a new break above it. Because uh, also, don't forget that we have now... Uh, formed a, a steep upside support line which could uh, or up a steep upside line which could provide a, extra support for this uh, for this pair so uh, even if it corrects a little bit lower so that's why guys keep that in mind um, for but for now uh, we are like I said more bullish than bearish and finally your USD so here the situation is quite interesting. This is what I talked about this morning. And uh, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this level here, the 1.1237, because what I was saying that if the pair travels a little bit higher, but in kind of fails to move above this area and finds resistance somewhere around here, then we could see something like this, where uh, this is what I've drawn this morning, uh, where we could see maybe a small correction back down towards this 1.1147, which if previously it acted as a good area of resistance, now it could take the role of support and uh could see if, if it rebounds, if the rate rebounds from here, then uh, a push higher could maybe finally overcome this barrier, the 1.1237, and uh, yep, higher levels could be met. But again, for now, given that the in the short run, uh, the, uh, the the pair has already quite uh, had a decent had already uh, quite decent run to the upside, so maybe a small correction could be possible. But of course, all this uh, is going to depend depend if on this barrier for now, because if this will continue to provide resistance, um, yes, then we could see a bit of a correction to to the downside. However, if it if this one gets broken soon, well, I mean, uh, we'll have to just search for a higher resistance level somewhere here uh, before kind of consider maybe a small setback. Um, so um, basically, like I said, yeah, that's the situation with the euro dollar. Um, with the downside here, it's just for now, it's pretty straightforward. We would like to see a drop back below the 1.1039 zone and then aim for lower levels until then. Kind of where, uh, because it, if a drop below this would place the rate below the 200 day EMA, and maybe this way more sellers could see a good opportunity to step in. However, for now, any move lower could still be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying. So, guys, I really hope you found it useful. And uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. Uh, keep your eyes on the data. Uh, by the way, that today we had the uh, ADP and um, unknown farm employment figures um, so the expectation was initially at around minus 9 million but it came out at minus 2.2 million 760,000 so basically that's a well uh, very good number 
in of course in comparison to the forecast and the previous number still the fact that it's in the negative territory that doesn't help however uh, the market participants might see this is a good sign um, and uh, well I mean maybe as a good sign for the upcoming uh, non-farm payroll number uh, for Friday so that's why guys uh, be very careful uh, of course like I said for now yes everything is kind of looking quite positive and as, as you've seen when I was talking about the indices uh, those are accelerating and continue continuing to grow continuing to rise and the Nasdaq especially is very close to its all-time high again so uh, so yeah be very careful uh, like I said, for now everything's looking quite positive however don't forget we have the ISM non-manufacturing PMIs later on today so keep an eye on those and of course the uh, Bank of Canada interest rate decision but uh, the expectation there is of course for the uh, interest rate to stay the same uh, at zero point uh, plus zero point twenty five percent so uh, keep your eyes on that but that's more in relation to the US dollar against the Canadian dollar so uh, but yeah guys for now like I said keep your eyes on the calendar uh, we are at a very interesting spot right now in the market um, everything's very touchy and very vulnerable so mm, yeah don't get burnt on anything so I hope you I hope you found it useful. I hope you found found this video useful. And thank you very much for guys for sticking around and watching it till the end. Um, if you want to catch my video tomorrow morning, somewhere around nine o'clock GMT time. Oh, sorry, nine o'clock GMT time, six o'clock GMT time. Um, yep, and uh, we'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, and uh, we'll take it from there. So have a wonderful evening, everyone, and bye for now.